G'day everyone. Today is the third video in our series on measuring the weather at home. Today we're going to tackle temperature. Now this one's a little bit trickier than the other two, which is why it's been delayed slightly, but hopefully you'll be able to follow along and figure out a way to measure temperature at home. Let's check out what we'll need. Now, normally in my videos, I don't talk about having an adult to help until the end, but today I'm gonna to say it right up front because we're gonna be using some things like hot glue and a drill and some chemicals. So make sure you've got an adult to give you a hand with this one. You're gonna want a small bottle. Now, mine's got a cork lid and it's quite small. You could just use a plastic bottle for this. It'll just change the amount of other ingredients you'll need. A plastic lid will definitely work well. I'm just going with this because it's what I had laying around. We need some methylated spirits and some water, some food dye, a straw, some hot glue. Now, if you don't have hot glue, you can use something else. We just need to make sure we can get an airtight seal. Modeling clay might work. I've tried this with blue tack. It definitely doesn't work. So I'm sticking with hot glue. We're gonna want a drill bit, roughly the same size as our straw. And a syringe or eyedropper could come in really handy here. You could try it without it, but it's gonna get messy if you don't have one. For the first step, we need to make a hole in our lid about the same size as our straw. And this is where the drill bit comes in. Having an adult with a drill could help for this. I'm just gonna use it by hand. If you are gonna go the by hand option, just be careful when you're grabbing around the drill bit because sometimes they can be a little bit sharp. So I'm simply gonna put a hole down through the center of my lid. Once you've got the hole in your lid, you need to make sure that your straw is going to fit through nicely, that it's not gonna be pinched closed because we need liquid to be able to get through our straw. If it's not quite big enough, just use the drill bit to make the hole slightly larger. Once you've got the straw through the hole, we wanna put the lid back on the bottle and slide the straw down until it's about one centimeter from the bottom of the bottle. We don't want it to touch the bottom. So about a centimeter gap from the bottom of the bottle. Next, I'm gonna make sure that this is completely airtight by putting a little bit of hot glue around the top. If any air can escape here, things aren't gonna work. So we need to make sure that this is completely airtight. Now I'm gonna put that aside to dry and set so it's completely airtight and move on to my next step. Next, I need to make the liquid to go into the thermometer. To do that, I need equal parts water and methylated spirit or rubbing alcohol. So in my cup here, I know I've got 30 mils of water, so I need to add in 30 mils of methylated spirit. I'm also gonna add in some food dye to make my water a little bit easier to see, especially because my straw is not clear. It's gonna be a little hard to see, so I'm gonna use a bit of blue food dye to make it stand out. I've now got some dark blue liquid ready for my thermometer. Now, traditionally you'll see red in thermometers, but you can use whatever color you like here. I've chosen blue because I think it'll show out inside my yellow straw. If you've got a clear straw, use any color you like. If you've got a colored straw like I do, you need to pick a color that's gonna stand out inside the straw. Now that our glue's dry on our bottle and we've got a nice airtight seal, it's time to add the liquid into our bottle. Now, if you're using a larger bottle, like a plastic bottle or something like that, you're just gonna need to make more of this liquid. So we wanna fill it up about three quarters of the way to the top. So I'm gonna remove the lid and add my water in. This is where having a syringe or a measuring jug or something like that could come in handy. After that, we're gonna to need to do the really tricky step of adding water to the top of our straw and sealing it up. Again, I'm gonna use some hot glue to seal mine, but you could use modeling clay or something like that, as long as you're gonna get an airtight seal. So let's get the liquid into our thermometer. Now that my bottle is three quarters filled up, I'm gonna reinsert the lid. Remembering I need a really airtight seal, so I'm gonna push the lid in quite firmly. Now that I've got my lid on firmly, I need to add some liquid into my straw. I'm gonna tip it in from the open end. This is where the syringe or eyedropper is really handy. I'm gonna fill it up to about three centimeters above the top of the lid. This is where you're gonna find out if your lid is airtight or not. So you may wanna do this over the sink, because if it's not airtight, the water's gonna fill up inside the bottle and pour out. So make sure you've got a good seal or you're doing this somewhere where you don't mind spilling some bright blue water. As you just saw, my bottle wasn't as airtight as I expected and water started flowing out the top. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna completely line the top with my hot glue to try and completely air seal it. This is where it's super important to get that airtight seal. If you're using a screw-on cap, you may not have as much trouble as I'm having. Obviously, these corks don't seal these bottles as well as I thought. 
Gonna let that glue dry and then we'll try again. Now that my hot glue is dry, I've hopefully got an airtight seal around the top, so I'm gonna try that again. I'm just gonna add water to the top and hopefully it's gonna fill up to about three centimeters above the top of the bottle. Okay, I added slightly too much, but that should still be fine. I've now got my liquid in the bottle. Spilled a tiny bit on the outside, but I've got my airtight seal that I needed. The final thing that we need to do is to seal the top of our straw. I'm just gonna use a little bit of glue to fill up that hole. You could bend it over and tape it closed, whatever works for you, but we need to, again, make sure that it's got a really airtight seal at the top. Your thermometer is now ready to use. To do this, you could simply put a mark where the water is currently sitting and then place it somewhere outside. On a warm day, you should see the water move above that mark and on a cold day, you should see the water drop below. If you want to get a little more accurate, you can actually measure the temperature with a different thermometer and put a mark at where your water level's at. Then when it's 25 degrees, put a mark for 25 degrees. When it's 15 degrees, put a mark for 15 degrees. And you should be able to measure the actual temperature using this. To give you a demonstration, I'm going to dunk this into some water to show you the movement up and down. What I have here is a cup of cold water in blue on the left and hot water in red on the right. I'm going to dunk my thermometer into each to see the movement of the water inside my straw. Let's start with the hot water on the right. As you can see, quite quickly the liquid starts to move up my straw. If I then change it over to the left, the liquid quickly starts to retreat back down the straw. This is what will happen with your thermometer when you place it outside. You want to put it somewhere that's out of the direct sunlight, and as the temperature changes, you should see that liquid moving up and down inside the straw. Let's talk about the science of what's happening here. What we're seeing here is a similar effect to what we saw in our barometer. With the barometer, air pressure was squeezing in on the air, causing the balloon to be sucked down, or expanding the air, causing the balloon to move up. A similar thing's happening in our thermometer, but it's temperature causing the change. As the temperature increases, the atoms inside our liquid want to push apart. The only space for them to go is up the tube. That's why when I put it in the warm glass of water, we saw the liquid start to move up. As the temperature drops, those atoms contract back in, which is why we saw it start to fall when I added it to the cold water. This is one that you can do a lot of different experimentation with. Try this without water or try it with different liquids. See what else you can make a thermometer out of. I hope you've had fun following along with our measuring weather at home series. You've now got three different instruments you can use to measure the weather over the next week or month to monitor what's happening in your area. Where I am, it's spring, so it's an exciting time for weather. We get a lot of hot days and cold days, windy days, storms, all sorts of things. Pay attention to what's happening with all your different instruments during those different periods of weather. I hope you've enjoyed the video and we'll see you next time.